with Rabbi Yona and Rachel. Welcome. We have Shana Sorrentino, Dana. Welcome, everybody. Welcome, welcome. How was your Shabbos, Rachel? Shabbos was good. Shabbos was good. Um, yeah. Yeah? Yeah. Shabbos was really nice. We, um, what did we do? We had a, a rousing game of apples to apples. <laughs> apples to apples. And we learned a lot of Torah. Which was nice. We did a bunch of Pirkei Avot. There were right, so we we been, we were doing Pirkei Avot, and we were learning who's com also commentary on Megillus Ruth. Right, right. The Dubna Magid. Dubna Magid on Megillus Ruth. Right. A lot of Dubna Magid this week. And on the Parsha. And on the Parsha. So. Bahar Bukugosai. Some amazing stories. Do we Truly amazing, amazing. Hopefully, stories. we can remember one of those. Maybe Naftali will. Uh, will come and tell it for us. Which was the one that was there? Because all of them were all like, oh, that's such a good story. All of the Dubnamagi commentaries have stories with them. And there are you know, inevitably stories from the shtetl or stories from Russia. And you're always like, okay, I hope this one's going to work. Because it's talking to a different time. Avi, hello. And so this week we were like, oh, that one worked. Oh, that one also worked. They were great. And of course, right now I can't remember. I also read about the Dubna Magi yeah. that he started his life, you know, um, really by the age of 20, he already was quite a popular speaker and rabbi. And he, he had lots of different positions in Lithuania, in Poland. Yeah. I mean, it all was really the same area, so to speak, but uh, he was in different yeah. towns. And and uh, but he also would travel extensively to speak, and people loved and still love because he's able to you know present these uh, beautiful parables to explain concept. Right. But one of the things about the Dubna Magid or the Dubner Magid, as maybe we should right. say, right? The one of the things about the Dubna Magid, which we knew intellectually, we knew. But the author of this translation pointed out was he was an incredible genius, right. and uh, there and there are many layers to his uh, mashalim, to his uh, parables. They're not there's like the simple level of the mashal of the parable, right. and then there's deeper and deeper. Oh look, we have Rabbi Karupkin from Toronto. Oh, Hello, hi. Rabbi and Kenny and oh, Avi. Hello. Oh, beautiful. Um, well, it's, it is true that storytellers, the reason storytelling is such an amazing skill is that it works on many levels. It works on an incredibly narrative level, that people hear stories and they enjoy them. And they also work on an intellectual level and also like on a deeply spiritual level. And that's why the Dubner Magid is so amazing, especially the stories we listened, we heard Naftali read this week, was because it really spoke to us on all those levels. Maybe Naftali will find the, the story. Yeah. yeah. We'll have... Uh... That one? <laughs> okay. Thank you. So, oh, is this the one we wanted? Is it the king? Oh, it's always the king, as the kids always say. Oh, about the servant. The, right. Remember the, the person who was wine, the wine pourer? Oh, yeah, yeah. This is good. Okay. And we have... Is Check that the this. one? Is that not, that's not the one? That's the one no, you're which one? This one, Rashi says, I'll turn my attention. Pay your reward, that one. I think it's the king that was in the wrong thing. Oh, okay. So, there's another king, but this is the one so, I'm going to I'm going to read the short parable of the Dubna Magi. So, it says, uh, in, in the partial we just had, in the Hukosai, Valachtem imbi kreire, and walk contrary to me, I too will walk contrary to you. So if you kind of, how you treat me, says Hashem, I, you will be treated. Okay, so listen to this. There was a king who had a custom of distributing valuable gifts to all of his ministers and servants on every joyous occasion in the kingdom, such as the day of his coronation and other celebratory events. Now among the king's servants was also a staff of expert physicians. 
right? The, uh, the king did not give them gifts like the other servants. Rather, whenever the, they got into some kind of trouble, the king would, you know, get them out of the trouble. They were behind on their cell phone bills, right? They, whatever the, these, I tip, these uh, expert physicians sometimes got into hot water and the king would rescue them, take them out of hot water. To the other servants who served him, to his other retinue of, of attendees, attendants, he gave gifts on a regular basis, kind of on schedule. So one of the king's confidants he says, Hey, king, <laughs> why don't you give gifts to all your servants, right? Um, and, and, and also give it to the, the physicians at the same time. Why is there this differentiation between when the servants get them and when the, the physicians? It's a good question, says the king. But you have to differentiate between the work of all the other servants to the work of the king's doctors. We have to look. There is a difference. All the other servants serve me all the time. All my attendants, they are on call all the time, 24-7, even on Shabbos. These attendants are on call. All the time. The, every single day. And therefore, I feel like I need to reward them for all of their efforts. They're always on, they're always on call. I want them to know that I value what they're doing. It's not the case with the doctors. They are busy with my health. Only when I get sick and I need their expertise. But when I'm healthy... They don't even remember that they're the king's servants, right? If I'm doing fine, they're not even checking in. How you doing? How you feeling? Only when something goes wrong do the, do the doctors show up. Therefore, says the king, I reward them as well. Just like they rescue me when I am sick, I do the same for them whenever they get into trouble, I rescue them. That is what the Pasuk says. I will walk, if you will walk contrary to me, then I will walk contrary to you. And this is, you want to explain this parable? Well, the idea being that, um, obviously in the parable, as is often the case, Hashem is the king, right? The creator and sustainer of the world is in this story, the king. And rewards on a regular, kind of predictable basis those who are... <laughs> are in his home and in his retinue, connected to him, giving their energy, he gives back, regularly, predictably. And those for whom it's only an emergency is when Hashem will pull you out of the fire, so to speak, or out of trouble. Um, but that relationship isn't there, that relationship of closeness and connectedness, and in this case, the predictability of whether it's gifts or service on one side or the other. And... Um, you so know. this is a lesson about how we are supposed to right, have our right. servants I mean, like Hashem. We're own... supposed to be like the servants, not right. the doctors. Right, we're not supposed to be like the doctors. In this parable. In this parable. Um, and then the idea, the only word I have trouble with is the word contrary. Because the doctors aren't really contrary. They're just not consistently checking in. They're not consistently checking in on the king. I, I, so I was discussing this because they're, it's not... They only are there, right, in case... Th if something's going on. Right, and they and the king, therefore, helps them when they're in trouble. Right. It's which is one kind of relationship. Right. But the other kind of relationship, the better relationship, is a relationship where we're always serving Hashem. We're always connected to Hashem. Right. right. That is the ideal one. Right. I mean, clearly by this parable, that's the ideal. <laughs> which gets us to our next song. <laughs>
almost time for a l'chaim. So if you could prepare the holy uh, uh, l'chaim for today. If you have yes. friends, loved ones, people who need healing, if you could please put their names into the comments so we can all have them in mind as we pray uh, uh, for their behalf, that these people should have a full shlema. Oh, look, we've got Sharon Barbara Cook, our dear family friend. Hello, Barbara. I hope you and your family are well. Please send in names of people who need healing. Put them in the comments so we can have them in mind. Yeah. You know, one of the things that we talked about last night uh, in... Uh, Havdallah. What was, Havdallah, thank you. <laughs> Havdallah. One of the things we spoke about last night was the commentary on Pirkei Avos from Rev. Eli Melech Lejansk. Hello, Ozzy. Hello. Hello, Curtis. So Rev. Eli Melech, the Heilige Rev. Eli Melech, the, the giant, giant tzaddik, what did he say? He said, you know, it says, Al of three things the world exists, right? Allah Torah, the Oymed, Omed exists, stands, exists. It's maintained. Maintained. Mm -hmm. Torah, Avoda, Gemilus Chasadim. The world stands on these three things. It, is, it, it exists. In fact, it only is perpetuated because of these three things. Rebeli Melech says, today, the world exists only on Gemilus Chasadim, only on loving kindness. Everything, the world literally depends on loving kindness. Now, he said this over 200 years ago. Why? Why doesn't the world stand? We, we learn Torah. There are great Torah uh, academies. People study Torah more than ever. Dapyomi, other kinds of uh, uh, the, the democratization of Torah study has perhaps never been greater. And yet, it is not on Torah. Avoda on prayer, on service, on, it's not on that. It's on the mitzvah that we all can do right now. The biggest mitzvah that we have today is not going to synagogue and praying. It is not gathering together as a community in groups. Rather, it is working on chesed, on helping those in need, and, and on being there in that, that relation with Hashem, like we talked about in the first mushal, being a servant to Hashem, asking what does Hashem want of me, and developing our personal relationships. So a couple of a couple of names. Okay, please, the names. Okay, so Abigail Amuna Basara was just given to us as for our for our l'chaim to help and our davening and prayer for help um, from Bradley Cook. That's so nice. Hi. <laughs> So great you're here with us. A lot of folks. Beautiful. Yafit's here. Barrett's here. Sharona's here. Oh. So great to see your names as they scroll up. Sorry, we miss some of them as they scroll up. Um, but it is so great oh, so to know that you're out there. Okay, and we're bringing here, here. Look at this. You. We've got the uh, this incredible team here uh, helping us with this <laughs> production, uh, staff. production staff <laughs> helping us with this this l'chaim. So, um, what do we have here, Rachel? This is not any regular. Yeah, know, I don't. What did you? What did this is have? a special. We're, this is a very special bottle. Tell me about Look this at what bottle. we have here, Rebbits and Rachel. Tell me. You tell me about I this. I don't bottle. know about this bottle. Oh, what you do. No, I. Oh, maybe oh. I know. <laughs> so I, I'm gonna get it all wrong. I'm oh. gonna say all the details wrong, but I will say. Well, to tell what town do we get we it? We got in? this particular bottle. I'm sure you are tired of saying it. we went to Scotland with our kids. Did we went to Scotland? <laughs> we had the most amazing trip. We went, we were in England and Scotland and we were in Gateshead for Shabbos with, with Rabbi German Rob, and we had an amazing, amazing adventure um, outside, including Shabbos's and outside of Shabbos's. We went to a little town at the end of the peninsula called Campbelltown. And it's a whiskey, what are they called? A region, a whiskey region. 
and it has at least uh, you don't need to <laughs> and it has amazing whiskeys and, and among the amazing whiskeys it has this one. This is a special, a special they pulled one. it from the cask for us. Yeah, it was so, one of the ones on offer. So we want to make a, a, a l'chaim for Rufu Shlema. All those who need healing. Uh, Abigail and Muna Basara. We have Binyamin Ben Sara. We have Binyamin Ben uh, Shoshana. We have uh, Dovi Ben. Oh, list. thank you. My list. List. Dovi Ben Sophia. Dovi Ben Tess. And the Komando Ben Esther Mal uh, Malka. Matthew Abraham Ben Gitto. Uh, we have Dovi Ben Shoshana Rachamim Zalecha. Shimon Aaron Ben Adonecha. Um, we have Yisrael Semcha Ben Shifra. Esther Basara. Shmuel Mordechai Ben Miriam. Um, Rachamim Ben Zalecha. Did I see that one? Avram Ben Tamar. Who's, thank God he's at home, but he still needs our, our brachas. Chaim Menachem ben Leah. And um, we're, we're davening that our dear, dear friend, Rav Zika Reisman, Shev, Rav Bushlein, and Fika Chaim ben Helena Shangel. All of them should have a complete, complete Rav Bushlein. And uh, oh, look, we have Monica and, and Yossi. So L'chaim ever. 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 L'chaim Baruch Ata Adonai Eloheinu Melech Olam Shekol Nibbe Baruch. That's Isla. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Road trip in Scotland, highly recommended. It's when things beautiful. Return to when somewhere. you can do it, unless you live in Scotland already. But if you don't live in Scotland, it's. I it's just, you beautiful. know, I was just thinking, like, if somebody tunes in right now, they're like, "What is see, this?" They're Rabbi Rebbitson drinking, <laughs> and that's okay. I think that's also part of what is generally happening in quarantine. A lot of people are, are are gathering virtually. To have a cocktail together. I and, had a look and a social socially this I, week with know, my friends from yeah. high school. Right, you had a mini reunion. We had a lachayim with the uh, the friends exactly. from from Detroit. From uh, of course, we're spread out all over the country now. Right. Uh, and it's hard even before this. It was hard to get together. It's been many years since you guys have all been together. Yes, many years, and it's it's uh, it was beautiful. It was a beautiful uh, gathering. We all made toast, virtual toast. Mm. So lachayim, lachayim. Hello, Rav Yossi. Hello, Shlomo Walt. So this is, uh, I want to share another idea. Yeah. Um, when you go to, oh, L'chaim Lebrach, all the brothers and sisters. Okay. So when we go to pick a bottle of wine on Friday night, <laughs> what, what do you think of? So... You know, kind of the way things are normally people, you've got nice guests, you've got, you know, you want to impress the guests, you pull out a nice bottle of wine, right? Or however many guests you or have. Or you have to bring lots of wine. Right. For all you have a lot of guests. So now, right. no More. guests, no guests. So we're thinking, you know, what bottle of wine do you bring out, you know? And it occurred to, to me that we have to drink the best wine possible. On Friday night, not not wait around. We're not safe, you know, because we should enjoy the the Shabbos as much as possible. And it turns out we're not alone in doing this. Really? I spoke to yes, I spoke to several other people who just happened to bring up that they're bringing out their best bottles of wine uh, uh, for for, for, their for yeah yeah to share with their families. families for their families. That's right. Enjoy. Right. Yeah. That's a beautiful thing. It is a beautiful. Thing. We all could be getting by with grape juice. Naftali, you want to pull up a song for us here? Rock and chair. So this week, I also want to tell you we've got some great programs this week. Tomorrow morning, starting at 8.30, we'll be online. Our new Monday meditation with Marcus Freed, so that's Meditation Mondays, that goes live at 8.30 tomorrow morning. Mm -hmm. At 9.30 tomorrow morning, I teach Shulchan Aruch, I have a group, if you'd like to be included in the group, just put your name in the comments and we'll send you the link to join that Zoom, Chabura, that Zoom class, we study Shulchan Aruch every day. Um, 
Also tomorrow, also tomorrow, we uh, we have the the next episode of Together with Rabbi Yona, and I have this great conversation with Aaron, who runs a coffee roasting house here in, in right. Beverly Hills. Oh. D wonderful conversation. He is such a special, sweet, sweet neshama. What a special person. And I'm so grateful for our mutual friend for introducing us. Uh, we'd heard about him for many years. Yeah. Beautiful neshama, beautiful person, beautiful uh, store and, and coffee. And then we, uh, we have on Friday, we have also the... Um, Yes, Shlomo. The key is what makes you happy. I agree. That's I what agree. I wrote. That's right. That's what oh, I that's said. what you said. <laughs> I wrote. He said he liked the bar and I said, "Great, that's the best one. It's all very subjective." Yeah, this is a nice song, but this is Rocking Chair from Oasis, oh, and I and I don't know that one. So can you do the Rocking Chair from Bob Dylan? Thank you so much. <laughs> it's okay. It's okay. Yeah. 
past that. Slow mo, slow mo wall. There we go. Woo! Hello, Medi. Hello, Kathy. Oh, how's your family? How's everybody? Oh, beautiful. Bob Dylan's also my cousin from another mother, three times removed. We met at Mount Sinai. <laughs> I'm sure of it. Uh, I could use a little bit more of that whiskey just to make sure it didn't go bad. Just, I'll just take the cup. Just the cup. Thank you. We have so much love here from dear Naftali helping us out. L'chaim, L'chaim, L'chaim Bill, L'chaim Shmuley Gold, L'chaim, L'chaim Eddie, L'chaim Eddie, welcome to the broadcast. Great. By the way, we could do this recorded, you know, we could do this pre-recorded and just, you know, edit and color oh, or this yeah. and that. That would be so much less fun. But that, where would the uh, excitement be? Right. Where would the excitement be? Live, you know, a live... Uh, Studio audience, so to speak. I want to call in. Can somebody just call in? Oh, we should that. We should set up. Yeah, we could set up. We could set that up. Yeah. We'd have to use a different. uh, We'd have to use a different program. Or different. Well, we could we could do it through like something and then zoom it into this, you know. But at least they could just call. Oh, like a phone call, but then people there wouldn't hear. What if I put on speakerphone? Like if I didn't use my phone to respond to people. We will work on this. We Hello, on this. Shmuel Berger. L'chaim, l'chaim, Shmuel, l'chaim, l'chaim. So maybe we'll set that up. That we'll, I mean, it might be a ringer the first time. No yeah, problem. we'll, we'll, uh, we'll, but I'm done. We can find out somebody who does actually want to call in um, just to test the waters. But that would be fun. That would be fun. Naftali, you want to bring us another tune? We're going to do a Shlomo song. Oh, some of that's going to sourdough. Sourdough's going great. Oh my gosh, the sourdough, sourdough going great. Lord help me. Unbelievable, it's so good. It's going well. It's and, going we, well. and we sous vide again. Yeah. We sous vide, yeah. we were successful. Oh, yeah, the sourdough is going strong. Till I can really get a song. Yeah, I, I you know, I'm the holy deco. Look, the holy deco. <laughs> That's the hey, look, a brisket. The holy deco. The holy deco. The holy deco. 
Please sign, sh- sign Shalom Aleichem. Sing. Oh, sing. Shalom Aleichem. Shalom Aleichem. The one from Shabbos. The Shabbos. Shalom Aleichem. Shalom Aleichem. That one? No. Malachi Azadis, Malachi El Yoy, being Melek, Malachi El Yoy, in my father's struggle. Oh boy, I've been to Shalom, Malachi Azadom, Malachi El Yoy, being Melek, Malachi El Yoy, in my father's struggle. Shabbat time, what do we call it? Shabbat time with Rabbi Yon right. or something like that. We're not quite right. sure. Right. Hopefully it'll not just be, it. hopefully it's going to be a, a more of a, a family effort. We'll see. Uh, Shmuley, I don't know Shalom Aleichem on guitar I, uh, offhand. I haven't, I haven't played have it. I haven't it. played it in so long. I don't know you why. Don't sing it on I know, but I used to know how to play it. Okay, maybe next time. Next I know. Week, by, next week. by this end of this week, please God, lean it. Okay, okay. You're welcome, Raul, you're welcome. God bless you, God bless your family, and all your, your beautiful uh, friends, everyone should be well. Oh, Rachel, these have been so much fun. Did you think that when we started this, we would still be doing this for two months? You know what? We, or I guess not, but I don't know, five times, six times? I don't know, we can check. I, how many times? Eight? A lot of times. I think I think we thought it would be like a fun way to connect and kind of like talk to a bunch of people all at once. And we thought that we didn't. I I for one did not know it would be going on this long at all. Um, but it is kind of fun, and uh, it's more fun when people write us notes and say hi and. And you need a helping hand and nothing. <laughs> Oh, nothing is going right. Close your eyes and think of me, and soon I will be there to brighten up even the darkest night. You just call out my name, and you know. Soul Doctor. Yeah, Thank you. We hope to yeah. see it on TV soon. And we got Mike. Uh, and we got Rabbi Simcha Green. Shavuot Shavu Tov Shavu. to you, Holy Brother. Hello, 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 hello. I think I need some more lyrics, uh, Naftali Hirsch. Oh, 
Oh, Reb Shmuel Gellert's in the house. Reb Shmuel Gellert's in the house. Um, you bring me, just bring it to me. I'll find it. Do you have a message for the for the audience for this week? Something you're thinking about? We just counted yesterday. Thirty. No, today. What's today? Thirty-eight days of the Omer, right? Did we count? No. Mm-hmm. 38, yeah, yeah, last night, yeah, so today's 38, yesterday was 37, tomorrow will be something else. Any thoughts for the holy audience? Any thoughts for the holy audience? Um, well, I don't know exactly where everyone is emotionally or spiritually or physically for that matter, if you're in a crowded house or if you're all alone, um, but, you know, uh, this is testing everyone's endurance. Um, I certainly see it in our family, my family here in the house with us, and our extended family, and our friends that we're speaking to on the phone, and FaceTiming with, and trying to stay connected. It's really a marathon, and because we don't know what end is in sight, right. it's really important to pace yourself, right? That we can't do everything in one day, we can't uh, call everybody, we can't do all of the work that we need to do. We can't do all the projects around the house that we think we want to do or that we Oh, a lot of projects. Out. There's endless projects and they and they take more time <laughs> than you think they're right, going right, right. to. And then one project leads to another project and then, you know, some projects multiply. So pace yourself. So pace yourself, but also like give yourself the space to do things that you want to do in addition to the things that you have to do. Um, and I think that is a message I'd like to give myself as well as everybody else. Because I think it really, you know, to treat ourselves right. kindly in that way is the only way that we can really adjust to this new, strange, strange situation. And can I do one more thing? Yes, please. So, you know, many of us have loved ones who have gotten sick, and we know folks in the community who have lost family members, and we've lost family friends and folks. Um, and then there's also kind of a bubble of like, most of the people we know actually are okay. People have gotten sick and gotten better. People have not had signs of COVID-19 or they have like a little cough or a little cold or all those like light symptoms you hear about. Um, and there's a kind of a, I think for myself, I feel like I'm in this protective bubble mentally. like. It's not so bad. Like on a given day at a particular hour, I'm like, well, you know, okay, it's, we're under a pressure cooker and we're trying to be careful. Everyone's being really careful and concerned about people, but like, it's okay. And then, of course, I read the news or I listen to the radio, which is sometimes good and sometimes less good. But what happens, I'm like, wait, it's actually really serious. It's really serious for us. It's really serious for our family. It's really serious for our neighbors. It's not just because someone might have a precondition or someone has like things going on. It's just a really serious thing because there's still a lot we don't know and that is why we have to be careful. And it's hard to be careful. It's hard to want to stay away from people that you love and care about. It's hard to stay away from the things you love doing. But when we break out of that bubble of like our own making, which we need to be in to be sane, and we look up and we see how serious it is, it's also really, really important, even if it can diminish our joy, which of course is what we don't want. We don't want to diminish anyone's joy, but we ultimately want to have joy for the long run. So we need to stay really safe and keep others safe. That's my message. Thank you, sweetheart. Thank you. (laughs) My soapbox. Sorry.
tonight and we hope that you have a safe week a wonderful week a healthy week a week of peace a week of healing a week of protection for you and all of your family and all of your loved ones please if you need any assistance don't forget to reach out to us at the i can help dot site s-i-t-e i can help dot s-i-t-e we'll be checking that tomorrow if anybody fills it in we check it every couple days thank you so much again for your time and being with us tonight, and God bless you all. We'll finish with this song. Great week.
David Sachs, Yehuda Solomon. God bless everybody. Shavuot Tov. Shavuot Tov.